Working on the set of this classic was a daily struggle for Steve McQueen, who portrayed Josh Randall, a compassionate bounty hunter. Each day he faced the pressures of embodying a character who balanced a tough exterior with a deep sense of justice. The show required him to navigate various moral dilemmas, often having to choose between the law and his empathy for those who had been wrong. His co-star, who often played characters that conflicted with his own, added to the emotional weight of the scenes. This tension off-camera sometimes mirrored the dramatic conflicts on screen, creating an atmosphere of anxiety for McQueen. Despite the intensity, his dedication to portraying a character who consistently sought to help those in distress highlighted his commitment to authenticity. The storylines often involved intricate plots, where Josh not only captured criminals, but also helped mend broken families and right societal wrongs. McQueen's daily anguish reflected his desire to do justice to the role while facing the complexities of his co-stars contrasting performances, making each filming day an emotional roller coaster. One thing straight right now. If they come for Logan, I'm not going to shoot myself. Before the debut episode of this classic western, nobody knew who Steve McQueen was. He was a well-trained actor from New York that came from the famed neighborhood playhouse as well as the actor's studio. He had his big screen premiere that you'll miss in just the blink of an eye, playing the role of a knife-wielding thug in Paul Newman's. Somebody up there likes me from 1956. He did some Broadway production work too, and got good reviews for his acting skills. Then, in 1957, he was in the cult favorite science fiction movie, The Blob. That film wasn't released until after Wanted Dead or Alive. But the producer of the series, Dick Powell, got to view a rough cut of The Blob, and he liked what he saw in McQueen's performance. Proof than you bargained for. In 1958, Dick Powell offered Steve McQueen a role in the show Trackdown a Western series starring Robert Culp. Together, they filmed an episode called The Bounty Hunter, introducing Josh Randall, a character as tough as nails who let no obstacle stand between him and his quarry. The favorable fan reaction prompted more work for McQueen, leading to his own series, Wanted Dead or Alive, which began filming its debut episode in July of that year. I heard there was a trial going on in here. What about it? From the start, McQueen had a legendary temper on set and was known for his stubbornness. At the beginning of the series, he actually fired three stuntmen. Some sources claim it all happened on the same day, which is quite hard to believe. But it is true that he let go of three stuntmen while working on the show. McQueen's strong personality and demanding nature certainly left an impact on the production of the show. It must have been a challenging environment for all involved. Pretty much their word against his. I see. Thing is, we... Initially, there was some hesitation about casting Steve McQueen in the lead role of the show. Dick Powell recognized McQueen's talent and potential, but had concerns regarding his short stature and his inability to ride a horse, which were important for a Western character. These factors made Powell uncertain if McQueen could embody the rugged persona of Josh Randall. However, after filming the first episode, Powell saw early clips and was impressed with McQueen's performance. The actor brought a unique charisma and authenticity to the role that quickly won over Powell. It was during this time that Powell suggested giving Randall a gimmick weapon, which became a signature element of the character. This decision not only enhanced the appeal of the character, but also set the tone for the series blending traditional Western elements with a fresh twist. As the show progressed, McQueen's portrayal solidified his status as a leading man in television, demonstrating how casting decisions can evolve dramatically based on performance and creative vision. In 1958, the TV series Wanted Dead or Alive saw a significant fluctuation in its fortunes with the changes in salary and time slot. Initially, McQueen earned 750 per episode, but as the show's popularity soared, his annual salary skyrocketed to 100,000, an impressive figure for the era. However, the third season witnessed the show's time slot being altered, 
leading to a decline in ratings. Some speculate that this change, coupled with increased production costs, may have been CBS's strategy to end the show. Despite its ups and downs, One a Dead or Alive remains a memorable classic in television history. Water. Do you understand me? We won't harm. In 1958, the TV series Wanted Dead or Alive faced sponsorship issues and challenges with the perception of its main character, Josh Randall. Steve McQueen's strained relationship with Viceroy Cigarettes, the show's sponsor, added to complications. The creators initially struggled to sell the show due to bounty hunters being seen as unsavory character. To overcome this, they portrayed Josh Randall as a compassionate figure who often gave most or all of his earnings to help those affected by the crimes of the individuals he pursued. This approach helped redefine Randall as a heroic and honorable character, enhancing the show's appeal and addressing the negative perceptions associated with bounty hunters. Through these strategic storytelling choices, Wanted Dead or Alive successfully navigated its sponsorship challenges and reshaped audience perceptions of its lead character. He left on that stage just a little while ago. It was Leo who put that poster under my door. In 1958, the TV series featured a rising star named Steve McQueen, who harbored a strong desire to transition to the big screen. Eager for a film career, McQueen grew weary of the show as he longed for the grandeur of movies. His opportunity came when he landed a role in The Magnificent Seven. However, juggling the series and the film posed a challenge. To make his film debut possible, McQueen resorted to a clever strategy. He staged a fake car crash, making it appear he had been seriously injured. In reality, the crash caused only minor injuries like cuts, muscle pulls, and bruises. This ruse secured McQueen a medical leave from the series, allowing him to fulfill his silver screen aspirations. As the production of the series went on hiatus, McQueen embarked on filming The Magnificent Seven, paving his way to Hollywood stardom. Now which way do you want to ride that horse, mister? During the last season of the show, it became increasingly clear to the production team that Steve McQueen would be leaving. In response to this, they introduced a character named King, who was envisioned as a protege of Josh Randall. The intention was for King to eventually take over as the lead once McQueen departed. However, as development progressed, it became apparent that no one could replicate McQueen's unique charm and success in that role. The idea of transitioning to a new lid was ultimately abandoned as the producers realized that the connection audiences had with McQueen was irreplaceable. This decision highlighted the challenges of finding a suitable replacement for such an iconic character in the series. As a result, the final season faced significant changes in direction, focusing on concluding existing storylines while acknowledging the impact of McQueen's departure. The series remained a classic in the hearts of viewers, but the potential for a successor was never fully realized. You might interfere, Mr. Randall. That's why my brother's gonna kill you now. The TV series introduced us to a lot of future stars. In one episode called The Martin Poster, it features a real scrawny 21-year-old Michael Landon, roughly a year before he shot to be a household name on NBC's juggernaut Bonanza. Both Landon and McQueen shared common traits, with cult science fiction films and TV westerns launching their big careers. For Landon, it was a campy horror film called I Was a Teenage Werewolf, which was released in July of 1957 on a very low budget. You got all kinds of company. If you're looking for Colonel... Every cowboy knows that a good horse is crucial, but for Steve McQueen on the set of the show, his Mount Ringo was more trouble than he bargained for. McQueen often described Ringo as the crazy horse, and even the crew was in on the joke. Each day when McQueen arrived at the studio, Ringo would glare at him, setting the tone for their often tumultuous relationship. The horse had a mischievous streak, taking every opportunity to bite McQueen or step on his foot when he least expected it. If McQueen's hat fell off, Ringo would proudly stand on it, making a spectacle out of what should have been a simple moment. The crew found humor in McQueen's plight, 
posting signs around the sets wishing him good luck, playfully acknowledging the horse's antics. McQueen even bore a scar on his arm, a battle wound from his encounters with Ringo. He learned quickly to steer clear of the horse's rear, knowing well that Ringo often tried to kick him. Despite these challenges, their on-screen chemistry and the humor surrounding their misadventures contributed to the show's charm. In the late 1950s, a classic TV series called Wanted Dead or Alive was born. Ringo and McQueen, the dynamic duo behind the scenes, were onto something special. Their collaboration led to the creation of one of the most famous westerns of its era, captivating audiences far and wide. This iconic show showcased the talent and charisma of its stars, drawing viewers into a world filled with adventure, danger, and justice. As you revisit this timeless gem from the late 50s, immerse yourself in the Wild West through the lens of this beloved series. Experience the thrill of the chase, the camaraderie of the characters, and the legacy of a show that continues to stand the test of time. Let Wanted Dead or Alive take you on a journey back to a bygone era where heroes roamed the plains and legends were born. Your first time out? Oh, kid, you got yourself a future. In the late 1950s, a TV series burst onto screens with a rugged charm and a bounty hunter with a unique weapon. This classic followed the adventures of a bounty hunter named Josh Randall, played by Steve McQueen who captured wanted criminals to earn a living. Wanted Dead or Alive not only showcased the Wild West, but also brought the iconic lever-action Winchester rifle into the spotlight. The show reflected the era's fascination with frontier justice as it aired during a time when Westerns dominated television. Wanted Dead or Alive holds a significant place in TV history for its contribution to the Western genre, captivating audiences with thrilling stories of pursuit and capture. Well, it's the way this came up. Not an easy thing to say to you, son. What is it? In the casting process for the 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive, the producers focused on finding the right mix of talent and chemistry. For the lead role of bounty hunter Josh Randall, actor Steve McQueen stood out immediately. His rugged charm and charisma caught the attention of the casting director during initial audition. McQueen's performance was so compelling that he was asked to return for a chemistry test, pairing him with various actresses to see who could match his energy. One pivotal moment was when McQueen read opposite actress Ryan James, who played a key role in the series. Their on-screen connection was electric, leading the producers to feel confident about their choice. For supporting roles, the casting team held extensive auditions seeking actors who could bring depth to characters like the stoic and wise deputy marshal. One actor, who later became a fan favorite, impressed everyone with his ability to blend humor with tough guy persona, perfectly complementing McQueen's intensity. Behind the scenes, the casting director emphasized the need for a strong ensemble, ensuring all actors could hold their own in scenes with McQueen. Each actor underwent rigorous auditions showcasing not only their acting skills, but also their adaptability to the show's unique blend of drama and action. This collaborative effort resulted in a cast that not only looked good together, but also created memorable moments that left a lasting impact on audiences. Side. Now when I see him, I'll nod and you gun him down. With a focus on storytelling, the directorial vision behind the 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive aimed to capture the gritty essence of the Wild West while appealing to contemporary audiences. The director Sam Peckinpah, known for his intense and often violent narratives, infused the series with a sense of realism and moral complexity. He drew inspiration from classic Western films emphasizing character depth over mere action. His style included dynamic camera angles and innovative editing techniques that heightened the suspense and emotional weight of each scene. Collaborating closely with the cast, especially Steve McQueen, Peckinpah encouraged improvisation and a naturalistic approach to dialogue, allowing actors to bring their interpretations to the characters. The director also worked with the crew to create authentic sets 
and costumes that reflected the period accurately. This combination of creative influences and a collaborative spirit not only shaped the show's unique tone, but also left a lasting impact on the Western genre. I'm afraid I'm here, Stacy. Set in the American West, the 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive featured Josh Randall, a bounty hunter played by Steve McQueen. The production team faced various challenges, especially with set design and locations. They utilized existing western towns, often filming in places like the Paramount Ranch in California, which provided authentic backdrops without the need for extensive construction. Logistical issues arose from scheduling and weather conditions, requiring flexibility and shooting times. The crew relied on innovative techniques, such as using multiple cameras to capture different angles simultaneously, allowing scenes to be filmed more quickly. Additionally, they employed practical effects for action sequences, enhancing the realism of the show. The iconic rifle carried by McQueen, a Winchester Model 1892, became symbolic of the character and was specially modified for the series. This attention to detail contributed to the show's authenticity and appeal. As the series progressed, it became known for its tight storytelling and engaging characters, solidifying its place in television history. How far is it to the, the creation of the film's score and soundtrack for the 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive was a collaborative effort involving composers and musicians who aimed to enhance the narrative and emotional tone of the show. The composers worked tirelessly to craft music that resonated with the western theme storyline, using elements like twangy guitars and dramatic drum beats to evoke a sense of adventure and danger. Musicians brought these compositions to life, infusing them with energy and emotion through their performances. Together, the music served as a powerful backdrop, enriching the viewing experience and immersing audiences in the world of bounty hunter Josh Randall. Through careful orchestration and stirring melodies, the score and soundtrack of Wanted Dead or Alive became an integral part of the show's lasting impact on viewers. These talented individuals worked in harmony to create a musical tapestry that truly brought the story to life. In a memorable scene from the 1958 series Wanted Dead or Alive, Bounty hunter Josh Randall, played by Steve McQueen, faces off against a notorious outlaw in a tense standoff. The director skillfully builds suspense through tight framing and slow pacing. Cinematography captures the dust of the Old West and the weary expression on McQueen's face, revealing the weight of his choice. This visual storytelling resonates with viewers as they feel the imminent danger and moral dilemmas faced by the characters. Critics often praise McQueen's performance, as he embodies a complex hero grappling with his past while seeking justice. His calm demeanor contrasts sharply with his actions, adding depth to both his character and the narrative. Filmmakers have pointed out that this complexity was a significant shift for Westerns, moving away from one-dimensional characters toward more relatable and flawed protagonists. The impact of these moments lingers, as audiences find themselves rooting for a character who walks a fine line between law and chaos. Every shot and dialogue piece serves to amplify the emotion and tension of the storyline, making them timeless pieces of television history. These scenes left a lasting legacy in the genre, influencing future productions to explore intricate character dynamics and heightened drama. Can help I figured you would. The 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive had a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences by presenting a rugged hero, Josh Randall, played by Steve McQueen, who captured the essence of the Old West. This portrayal influenced pop culture by shaping the image of the lone cowboy and his quest for justice. The show contributed to discussions on themes such as honor, morality, and the struggle between good and evil reflecting the values and concerns of society at the time. Wanted dead or alive sparked debates on individualism, 
justice, and the definition of a hero, leaving a lasting impact on television and Western genre storytelling. Grabbing his right wrist with his left hand when he fires, he draws... The series Wanted Dead or Alive received a generally positive critical reception upon its release in 1958. Critics praised the show's unique blend of action and storytelling, particularly highlighting Steve McQueen's charismatic performance as bounty hunter Josh Randall. His portrayal captured the audience's imagination, making the character both relatable and admirable. Reviews noted the strong writing and engaging plots, which often combined moral dilemmas with thrilling action sequences. Audience reactions were enthusiastic, with many fans drawn to the show's blend of Western themes and modern sensibilities. The series garnered several awards and nominations during its run. It was recognized at various television award ceremonies, reflecting its popularity and impact on the genre. These accolades held significant meaning for everyone involved in the production as they validated the hard work and creativity of the cast and crew. The recognition helped to elevate McQueen's career, paving the way for him to become a major star in Hollywood. The series' legacy continued to influence later westerns, highlighting its importance in television history. During the filming of the 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive, lead actor Steve McQueen performed many of his stunts, showcasing his dedication to the role. The crew often praised McQueen for his professionalism and charisma on set, which contributed to the show's success. Behind the scenes, there were moments of camaraderie as the cast and crew worked long hours to bring the stories to life. Despite the challenges of production, the team's passion for creating quality entertainment shone through in each episode. What are you doing in Ben Horn? Looking for a friend? What's his name? The series wanted dead or alive left a significant mark on television history particularly in the Western genre. Featuring Steve McQueen as bounty hunter Josh Randall, it blended action and dialogue in a way that captivated audiences. Its episodic format, focusing on the pursuit of outlaws, set a precedent for future shows like The A-Team and Walker, Texas Ranger, which also centered around law enforcement and justice themes. The character of Randall, with his cool demeanor and moral complexity, influenced the development of anti-hero protagonists in later films and series. Its memorable tagline, Wanted Dead or Alive, became ingrained in popular culture, referenced in various media long after the show's end. Moreover, McQueen's portrayal helped redefine leading men, showcasing vulnerability alongside toughness, a trait echoed in actors like Clint Eastwood, and later characters in gritty drama. The show's legacy can also be seen in its impact on the depiction of the American West, blending realism with myth, influencing films such as Unforgiven and the modern Western revival. The storytelling techniques and character archetypes introduced continue to resonate in today's media landscape. If you have any experiences or memories related to the 1958 TV series Wanted Dead or Alive, we invite you to share them. Discuss how this film impacted you personally or influenced your perspective on cinema. Feel free to engage with likes, shares, and subscriptions for more cinematic explorations. Your unique insights and stories are valuable contributions to our community of film enthusiasts. Share your thoughts and let's continue celebrating the power of cinema together.